Hi, this is Larry London. I welcome you to a very special edition of Border Crossings. Today, we are very, very fortunate to have with us a music icon, a man who, along with his two partners, created a sound that really wasn't existed before this gentleman who joins us today came into the music world, came into the music scene as part of Peter, Paul, and Mary. We have Paul Stuckey with us, and we welcome you to The Voice of America. Thank you, Larry. I, I have to disagree, though. The Weavers were there before we were, and I'm sure that there were groups before the Weavers as well. Well, yes, of course there were, but you guys took it in a whole nother direction. As Peter, Paul, and Mary, you took folk music and made it mainstream. It wasn't a specialized format anymore. Although, you know, the Weavers and groups like that were also at the beginning, but it was be blowing in the wind, Puff the Magic, Dragon, Lemon Tree, the list goes on and on and on. The mm. big, huge mega hits that Peter, Paul, and Mary performed and had over the years. Uh, and you were responsible, of course, for the wedding song, which is a song you wrote as a solo artist uh, for your own self. But, it, it, you know, you've had an amazing career, an absolutely amazing career. Oh, yeah. There's and no I think your first album came out in 1954, or your first record, you were in high school. <laughs> you got me. Yeah, the Birds of Paradise. Right, right. So, I mean, music, is, it's always been your passion. Music has always been what your plan was, I guess. It, it was, and not for commercial intent. I mean, I really, I backed into a successful career. I was into photography, but music was the best way to express things that I saw, ways that I felt. And, you know, I, I think there's enough only children out there listening who would recognize the fact that sometimes you move into a group of people you don't know how to be, what to say, but because you don't have siblings who've hit you in the arm or, oh, mom, mom, did you see what Noel did? You don't have that kind of interaction. So music became my language, you know, became the way of expressing my innermost fears, my innermost uh, delights, my joys. And then ultimately, as I became an old codger, became uh, the way of seeing things that I thought needed correcting or commenting upon. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have to, you know, credit you and say that, you know, if you don't mind me saying, you look and sound great. You're 83, if I'm not mistaken. Woo! -hoo! Yeah. And you don't look, you do not look that. You, and you've been a part of music history for many decades. And you obviously you are keeping yourself young and, and healthy because you look great. Well, I have to give a lot of credit to my wife uh, and a balanced life. Uh, I had a choice in the late 60s, early 70s of maintaining a career that, you know, as you've pointed out, had a pretty high trajectory and or getting real. And I had a daughter that I wanted to get to know. And ultimately, we had two more daughters, twins, a couple of years later. And the move to the country uh, was probably the smartest thing we could have done. We moved to the coast of Maine and and we've been there for over almost 50 years now. So. Right, right. And you guys, I think, if I'm not mistaken, got married in 63. Her name is Betty. Am wow, I... yeah, we went to high school together. Yes, yes. So, And that's amazing in and of itself. I mean, how many people in showbiz stay right. in one relationship? So, Yeah, yes. Well, we've been tested. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, the major test was, are you going to believe all this stuff they're saying about you? Or are you going to have a... a a deep and meaningful relationship. Mm. So, you know, fandom is pretty, sucks you in pretty hard. And that's pretty much why I turned spiritual uh, in 1969 that, that led to the wedding song and that has led really to my perspective and my point of view on everything that I've created since then mm. is to try to find that anchor, that uh, source of what it is that we hold in common, but mm. that could be a, uh, a referent point that was less less movable, flexible, and erroneous as fame. Mm. Well, we're talking with Paul Stuckey from Peter, Paul, and Mary, of course, with Peter Yarrow and the late Mary Travers. You guys released over 50 albums throughout your career as Peter, Paul, and Mary, and I think you mm -hmm. got together, you broke up, you got together, you broke up, and then you got together again, <laughs> stayed together for, for a number of years until, unfortunately, Mary's untimely death. But you kind of, it, it seems strange, you know, right at the beginning of Peter, Paul, and Mary, your first album was 1970, but in 71, you released an album called Paul, 
But Peter and actually no, Peter no, and no, so no, you, Paul Paul and Paul and okay I was right the first time Paul and yeah I was kind of hoping that it would sit on a shelf somewhere between Mary and Peter ah. and I thought that was a nice way well you know if you think about it how many groups were named by their individual names not many that I can think of right right uh, Crosby Stills and Nash mm -hmm. right right Which, uh, but it affords you as a performer the opportunity to be yourself and not be uh i don't know i'm sure that most groups broke up because there was a lead singer who had a name and the, the also band and if you were in the also band well, you know i i've got something i want to say personally well peter paul and mary allowed us to say it personally and on stage throughout our career we had these little solo sections Mm -hmm. So who decided Peter got first billing? <laughs> that comes from an old folk song, actually, Larry. I don't know if you know the 10,000-year-old man. Have you ever heard of it? No, I've it's, heard of it. I've not heard it. This is, uh, I was born about 10,000 years ago, and there's nothing in this world that I don't know. I saw Peter, Paul, and Moses playing Ring Around the Roses, and I want the guy that says it isn't so. And the Peter, Paul, and Mo love it <laughs> was already there. So we just oh. filled in the airy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we're very fortunate today. Paul Stuckey's with us. And if you wouldn't mind doing a song for us, since you kind of just warmed up there a little bit, I know the audience that are watching and tuned in are very anxious. They see you holding a guitar. So you're going to do something for us? Yeah, I will. I will. It's, um, you know, it seems especially appropriate for the Voice of America to, uh, to do this version of America the Beautiful. So many, uh, so many of us know the first verse, you know, I mean, and I just thought it was appropriate to write two new ones that are perhaps more current. But I'll start with the first one. Oh, beautiful, full, spacious skies, where amber waves of green, for purple mountain majesties, above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And crown my good with brotherhood from sea to shining Oh, 
Wilton Majesties Above the fruited plain Of America, America God shed his grace on thee And crown thy good with brotherhood From sea to shining I would have never in my wildest dreams in all of my career imagined singing along <laughs> with, with the amazing Paul Stuckey. <laughs> Get out. That, that never would have crossed my mind. Of course, known as the tall one, because you were the tallest one in the trio. I so everybody was. could see you very easily. <laughs> Actually, Mary was like 5'10 or something. I mean, you know, pretty tall for a woman. And then she wore these she wore these heels and Peter kept trying to knock them down, you know, get <laughs> something a little less than stilettos you know <laughs> uh, so, and, yeah. Peter Yarrow still performing I mean have you guys done you did a tribute I mean you were doing a Peter Paul and Mary tribute while Mary was going through uh, chemo and, and the treatments in the hospital have you uh, gotten together as a duo since that time yes uh, before the pandemic uh, Peter and I maybe did a half dozen uh, shows a year together as a duet uh, all across uh, the United States and, you know, in reduced sized halls, of course, because uh, the trio sound and the duo sound were quite distinctly different. But many of the songs uh, that we sang were the ones that the trio did. And actually, quite often, we employed the audience as Mary's voice, you know, doing a song like uh, Jet Plane. Mm -hmm. They would sing the lead and Peter and I would do our harmony. So, yeah, it was quite nostalgic, quite moving, and, uh, you know, quite reassuring, actually, that people still come together to sing. Mm -hmm. And maybe you sang on uh, <laughs> on America the Beautiful, or maybe you were confronted by the latency issue that exists <laughs> in all Zoom recording, <laughs> where you try to keep time, but uh, and every uh, thing is slightly off. <laughs> How have you been handling the COVID situation? I mean, as somebody in this kind of a business that's based on interaction with people in person, this has been a huge challenge. Yes, um, although I've had both my vaccinations. Uh, my wife has as well, so we're able to get a little clubbier with people who have also had their vaccinations, but still, you know, reservedly so because you can still be a carrier, mm -hmm. uh, even though you're in the clear. Uh, our daughter lives out on the West Coast, which is where I'm speaking to you from uh, today. And so we have seen her a couple of times. Uh, in terms of professionally working within the pandemic, I'll, I'll tell you a brief story that, that leads to a plug for an album that just came out. I was in the frozen food section of my local uh, grocery store back in Maine, and I looked at Paul Newman's pizza box and I saw for the second time in maybe a thousand viewings that it said all proceeds or 100% uh, profits go to charity. And I thought, you know, I've been in this business a long, long time, over 50 years. I've made a lot of recordings and most times I get paid for the actual recording, for the actual performance. But quite often when I write a song, I also get paid for the publishing. I also get paid royalties when it's played on the radio. I thought at some point that becomes profit. Do you know, I've, I've received so much from these songs. Uh, so I said, well, have I written anything that specifically addresses an issue? Well, yeah, sure, there's El Salvador, I remember that, you know, and then then I looked at some of the environmental songs that I'd written, I looked at some of the immigration songs that are in Familia del Corazon, uh, Juice about ecology uh, in these times, a song I'd like to do for you today, if I could, um, talking about environmental issues that face us and the, the wonky ship of state that we have to try to keep afloat and in one direction. Um, and I thought, well, heck, I'm going to assign each one of these songs to a specific charity and let them have the net proceeds. And, you know, I mean, I have to pay for the manufacturing of the record. I have to pay for 
the uh, yeah anyway the shipping and the whatever but there are, there are certain costs but that's like you know in a CD cost of what fifteen dollars or so that cost is probably five dollars or less right so right here's this money that can be divided so I contacted these fifteen other these 15 nonprofits, and the response has been fantastic, Larry. I mean, of course, th it would be, you know, you want to contribute money? Hey, <laughs> who are we to say right. no? Right. But what I loved the most was the fact that they wrote back and said, I mean, a typical one would be, I saw you when I was seven years old. My mother took me to a Peter Paul <laughs> guy. You know, I mean, and here they are in the higher echelons of the nonprofit, you know, doing right. the administrative work, the development work. So it's been great. This yes, and crazy. Just Causes, of course, is the name of the album, Just Causes. And uh, so, I mean, in terms of this album, how do you choose the songs, the charities? I mean, how, because there's so <laughs> many, there's endless numbers of charities. You have been involved with so many different, you know, social causes. Uh, you were you came about at the time that the, the war was going on and became friends with Bob Dylan, who wrote, you know, Blowing in the Wind for you guys. And so, I mean... Well, the war the was going on. It was a tough yeah. time in American history. The, absolutely. And the songs still have some resonance today. I mean, Blowing in the Wind, I think it's somewhat timeless. You know, uh, If I Had a Hammer is timeless. But those songs are written by other people. I can't give them away. So I had to go into the catalog of stuff that I had written. And with two exceptions, one of them, a beautiful song by Michael Blanchard called Danny's Downs that deals with the Down syndrome mm -hmm. uh, situation. And, um, and what was the other one? Oh, an Australian composer uh, named Gary Shearston, who passed away, wrote a song called Tom Quick. And I never understood how how uh, powerful a message for the indigenous peoples the song was. Um, so I put that on the album. So those are the only two out of the 15 that I haven't written. And wow. the rest were selected, the rest selected themselves. I mean, you look at the title or you hear a couple of the lyrics of this tune and you go, oh, well, that's got to be four. And then you go online and find out who's the most conscientious of the people that are distributing those funds are doing that work. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that was your good. first new album in a couple of years. You did release oh, no, a no, holiday no. album. No, it's actually a compilation album. A uh, compilation. This, okay. this one is. But the no, the previous album was called At Home, which I really had fun. I, I took a hand, you know, nowadays you can take selfies, right? Right, right. So I took a camera, stuck it on a, uh, a microphone stand close to my guitar so you could see most of my finger work and hired a photographer to come around and do all of the concerts in the state of Maine. So it was like being at home. And it's a combination CD, DVD um, with very intimate kind of, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. And it, that, so that's the late, that was the latest album. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've done but, something with your wife or she somehow is involved? I read where oh, she was. Well, we, uh, Betty went to Harvard Divinity. Mm -hmm. uh, went in her 50s. She just felt like something was calling her to get to the bottom of what is the spiritual nature of humankind is. Mm -hmm. And she followed her heart and her soul and became a minister. And we, uh, through her vision of a more eclectic and inclusive uh, form of worship, she created One Light, Many Candles, which uh, has readings of Dr. Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Black Elk, uh, from many different spiritual backgrounds, but all essentially ending up with the nodule of love, yeah. that connective link uh, that brings us all together. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, we've we've not done it actively, but there now is a website, uh, you know, one light many candles dot org, that uh, really not only presents what we did but kind of asks you if you want to do it in your neighborhood, here are the tools that you need to do it. Here's how we came to it. Here's how you can do it. So that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It's pretty, it turned out pretty well. We are uh, very fortunate. We are blessed to have Paul Stuckey with us, the music world, our country, our global community is, is grateful to all of the contributions that Paul Stuckey has given us. Uh, throughout the years and, and we're just lucky you are a gift. You know, your music has really resonated, continues to resonate. Would you do a song for us, another song? Oh, thank you, Larry. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll do the one that I mentioned before, if I can get 
see if I'm tuned. Sure. Yeah, this feels pretty good. <clears throat> right. There's a warning in the wind Comes wailing through the trees A depression in the shoreline Left by the pounding seas There is a lesson in the drought That brings the country to its knees In these times We are dancing with disaster When we live beyond our needs and pretend our hungry souls are not related to our greed. Life's a journey, but it's not about the speed in these times. In these times, we must be mindful of the gift. In these times, use our hands and hearts to lift the fall spirit in this land planting flowers in the sand reaching out a helping hand in these times as the perfect storm approaches and the gale around us roars no longer can we close our eyes or hide behind our doors our choice is fewer now by what we've chosen to ignore in these times. Ah, the ship of state is drifting, and it's getting hard to steer. It's a complicated issue, but the direction's pretty clear. And each of us is who we need to get to there from here in these times. Yes. Thank you. Wow. That sounds great. Paul Stuckey sounding just as good as he did 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And I want to ask you a question though. Your name is Noel Paul Stuckey. When did you go to the, to the Paul, the middle name part? Um, you know, we're standing in Mary's living room, having performed the four or five tunes that we've put together because Albert Grossman and John Court uh, introduced the three of us to each other. And he said, have you thought of a name for the group? And uh, he said, well, 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 we thought of the Willows. And Albert said, you know, if Noel changed his name to Paul, we could call the group Peter, Paul, and Mary. Well, because of the Peter, Paul, and Moses song and right. the, the alliteration, it just seemed so natural. But I was immediately reminded of all of the Hollywood stories I'd heard of people who 
Kerry Wisanowski changes his name to Bob Smooth <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be a movie star. I wasn't about to get caught in that. So I said, no, I'll take, I'll tell you what though, I'll keep my first name, but I'll take Paul on as a middle name. Well, wouldn't you know, Paul took me on. Because <laughs> for the next 10 years, forget it. I mean, anytime I introduced the concept of having a first name, it was really unimportant. And to a large extent, you fell into the trap. I mean, yes, you yes, referred yes. to me as Paul. Most people do, and it becomes kind of a gauge. You remember the fame thing I was talking to you about? I walk down the street and I hear somebody say, hey, Paul, I know exactly on what level they yep. know me on. You know? Yes. They say, hey, no. They're my guy. And then it's somebody else, right? Exactly. Who somebody knows else. me is no, right? Well, of course, Peter, Paul, and Mary, as I mentioned earlier in the show, responsible for a whole genre of music. And not many artists can say, yeah, I mean, we carved our niche in a genre. And so as somebody <laughs> who's been, been a part of music history as you have, how do you view today's music? As somebody who puts on the radio and you listen to what's being put out today, I don't listen to the radio that much because my daughter, Liz, has carved out a niche in her genre. Oh! And that genre is activist artists. She has created an organization called Music to Life that supports artists, singer-songwriters who want to go into their community and make a difference in their community. If it comes nationally, you know, as a result of that, fine. But they're just as happy working with the homeless, they're just as fine working with the incarcerated, they're just as fine working with environmental issues in their backyards. And to it, they bring a great deal of skill. I mean, we have become quite a musical country, if you think about it. I mean, remember that how narrow the confines of radio was in the late 50s. I mean, it was, you know, Perry Como, maybe Elvis Presley every once in a while. And then I think as a result of folk music, the introduction of so many concerns to the popular music mainstream mm -hmm. at a time when we felt that we were empowered to make a change in our lives and in the country's life, that became a, a launch pad for a lot of young artists. And there's so much talent out there now. And notwithstanding the glamour that surrounds perhaps the Grammy Awards with the flash and the dash, there's still some very talented grassroots folks that you can find on uh, musictolife.org uh, who I have ultimate hope for. So, no, I don't listen to a lot of radio, but my, my mind has been expanded uh, certainly into hip hop and uh, rap music. And while at first I thought maybe it was a little too aggressive, uh, a little too edgy, I now recognize that there was a reason why it was a little too aggressive and a little too edgy because there was a lot of grief and a lot of injustice wrapped up in much of what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So that is a, that's a part of uh, music to life.org as well. There's a huge spectrum of now, you know, even if you go to a folk um, uh, conference, you know, uh, like the, uh, well, there, there was one just recently, the Folk Alliance, had a conference. The musical genres are quite wide now, you know, and it is everything from rap, hip hop, you know, to country. Uh, really, such a welcome uh, inclusion now to have bluegrass music that are speaking to the issue of, of our times and not just lamenting the fact that the dog ran away. Do you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, the music that you gave us had meaning. There were, you know, sometimes double meetings, Puff the Magic Dragon. You no, know. it didn't have a double meaning. No, there was not a double meaning there. No, it had a deeper meaning. <laughs> I mean, it was about a kid growing up and mm -hmm. not being able to imagine his dragon friend, but that other... Oh, stuff. really? All the other stuff, not true. Interesting. No. To get it right from the, uh, the dragon's mouth, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff was conjured up by... People yeah. taking advantage of the time. <laughs> it was the times, I guess. Well, we have time. Speaking of times, we have time for one more song. If you would gift us with one more, we would really, really be grateful. Oh, great. Okay. Well, let's do it. Um, here's another org for you. Okay. Uh, www.revolution1x1. 
dot org. So it's a revolution one by one. Uh, it's a website. We're giving away free buttons because we want people to join this particular revolution. This is uh, the closest I can come to a honky tonk piano on a six string guitar. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna start a revolution. I'm gonna take it to the street. I'm gonna smile at every solitary person that I meet. I'm gonna wave at total strangers, no matter where they're from. I'm gonna start a revolution. Yeah, I'm gonna win it one by one. Now the secret of this movement I'm about to share with you You just pick somebody that you don't know That's all you got to do You don't need no other weapon Than the smile upon your face Just say hello, just let them know Yeah, we're all part of the human race And if you should encounter as I'm sure you will, some disbelieving cynic who is disbelieving still. We're gonna open all his windows, unlock every door. We're gonna sweep out every corner, mop up every floor. Till he goes a dancing in the jaw of the dragon, sleeping in the lion's den, dreaming in the arms of angels. Yeah, and that boy, it falls in love again. Come on now. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bop do 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 Revolution's bound to change a million hearts Totally disarm the enemy Before the fighting starts We're gonna laugh in the face of evil That misdirected fool We're gonna start a revolution Yeah, we're gonna win it, me and you But we're a raggle-taggle army Got no uniform of guns Still we've been called back a Wednesday, so maybe we're the ones to take this red revolution to the street and smile at every solitary person that we meet and wave at total strangers, no matter where they're from, we're gonna start a revolution, yeah, we're gonna win in me and you won in one and one and one yeah we're gonna win it me and you one and one yeah paul stookie is that on the just causes album you bet that in in these times and america all, all right where can people get it we got one minute so where can people get the just causes album well, there's Spotify and there's Hulu and there, I mean, excuse me, that's a that's a video thing. Amazon is probably the, the major place where you can get it, but you can go online to my website to find a channel to it. Uh, What's you can, your website? NoelPaulStookie.com. NoelPaulStookie.com. Well, what a pleasure it is to meet you and to have you on the show and Thank you, Larry. just to be, you know, I, I wish I could be in the same room, but this is the virtual same room with a part of history, part of music history. I loved your songs, played your songs back in the 70s when I was working on magic in Detroit, you know, magic radio and, and whatnot, because we're both from the Michigan yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loved Michigan. Changed my life. Michigan did. Yeah. Mm. Would you like to say anything to all the fans, worldwide fans? You got all these generations of fans in the last few seconds. You want to send a message out to the troops? To sure. Obey your heart and uh, give to the just causes. All right. We're talking with Paul Stuckey. Thank you so much for being on our show. What right. an honor. Thank you, man. Just Cause is the name of the new album from Paul Stuckey. I'm Larry London, and you've been watching a very special edition of Border Crossings. <laughs>